Hello. <laughs> Hi there. So I guess everything kind of works. Uh, even I'm sitting here in stereo. That's a bit disturbing. Anyway, uh, thank you very much uh, for coming here today. Uh, this is our first uh, QA workshop, and we are really excited. Uh, we haven't tried this before. So um, it's going to be two hours, more or less. And uh, what we are going to do is go through the very basic steps of setting up uh, test case scenarios for, for um, one feature, specific feature, uh, that is running on hello. <laughs> Hi there. So I guess everything kind of works. Okay. Uh, you know, here <laughs> Sorry. Stereo. That's a bit disturbing. Anyway, uh, thank you very much uh, for coming here today. Uh, this is our first. <laughs> I, I thought I thought it was a familiar voice, but I couldn't kind of <laughs> I didn't link that. Yeah, who, who's on IRC? Okay, well, um, very good. Uh, but anyway, so there's many new people here actually. So uh, we were thinking that it was it, it would be good to give you a bit of background, more in general. Uh, so how many of you uh, are using Wikipedia? Can you please raise your hands? Okay, that's not surprising. Uh, but how many of you actually? Uh, have been editing uh, Wikipedia articles. Okay, and how many of you are like? Have, do you have a technical profile? Do you work on technical uh, works? And how many of you have done a technical contribution to Wikipedia? Right. So you have seen more or less the the differences in 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 hands here, and the context of this workshop is precisely all these efforts we are doing to r raise the awareness that you can contribute content to Wikipedia, you can donate to Wikipedia, but also you can do technical contributions to Wikipedia. Uh, it is not just a website, it is actually a very complex project uh, that involves, uh, well, a website, which is the, <laughs> the, the fifth most visited uh, internet property, I don't know, so it's not just Wiki English Wikipedia, it's just the collection of all the Wikimedia projects. And this is pretty big. Uh, if you look at the, at the other organizations in that ranking, they are basically uh, huge corporations with very big teams and very big budgets. And uh, we have none of this, uh, but still, we manage, I think we manage to, to uh, organize Many, many projects and, and, and maintain a, a very good infrastructure quite well. But all this, of course, is done thanks to uh, thousands and thousands of volunteers uh, contributing content, donating, and we are, we are aiming here to increase also the, the, the amount of people that contribute their technical skills uh, with development, testing, documentation, uh, and all the other tasks that are usual in, in software development. Um, so in this context, um, testing is a very interesting area because uh, you, can be, you can be the super expert and contribute, and you can be someone without any clue about testing and actually do a very good contribution because uh, that is precisely uh, the users that we need. Uh, and then having users and, and Test, testing specialists working together, or under developers, of course, uh, we aim then to increase the quality of our releases and being able to, to release uh, faster, better quality software. Uh, so this is why we are, we are focusing on, on testing. And within the different areas in testing, uh, we also want to ramp up. It's more than ramp up because we have already started and we have something there, but it, we really want to make it more popular, uh, the fact of contributing to automated QA, uh, browser testing. This is also a task that by the name would just uh, um, make many people step back, uh, thinking, oh no, this is not for me. But actually, uh, we, we want to explain to users, editors, people interested in Wikipedia in general, in general that yes, you can get involved on this uh, precisely because you know the software you're using, uh, you, you know what to expect, and therefore you can help us just telling, uh, telling the, the programs, the computers, to just do all this automated testing and saving us a lot of, uh, a lot of work. All this, Chris will, will explain it a lot better. Um, 
Is there any question? Do you have any questions like general? What's the Wikimedia Foundation doing? Or I don't know. Any questions you might have before we get into the specific uh, topic of this session? Okay. Uh, would you mind introducing yourself real quick? Uh, yes. Uh, that's a good question. <laughs> Sorry, but you know, um, I was I was doing many things. So my name is Kim Jill. I work at the Wikimedia Foundation. I work in the engineering team, uh, but my work is um, well, it's it's a mixture of developer relations and community management. Uh, my work specifically is bringing more technical contributors to the project, volunteers. Uh, it could be individuals, it could be companies, anybody willing to help. Uh, all these, all these projects that engineering projects that, that we are developing. Any more questions? I'll give you a bit of information about logistics. So first of all, there's more people. So this is being recorded, or well, that's the that's the intent at least. Uh, it's being streamed live, or with a bit of delay, as you could hear before. And, and there's also a IRC channel, a Wikimedia uh, Dev. And there's some people out there that are trying to follow this workshop. We haven't tried this before. We, will, we, we don't know how it will work. But in any case, uh, here we are going to work together. But also when it comes to questions or, or speaking or saying anything, uh, please have a microphone because uh, this will help the people uh, somewhere else today and somewhere else any day because this will be recorded and available. Uh, second thing is, uh, okay, these are instructions for the people here. Those that are following online, I guess they know. But there's uh, drinks and food uh, down there. If you're at home, I guess you also know where that is. Uh, <laughs> there's restrooms uh, in this direction. Uh, so just follow the corridor, you'll find them. And um, we are now, now we're just in this setup. Uh, me talking and, and then Chris will talk a bit, but actually here we are going to be working. So feel comfortable. Uh, just don't steal anything, but apart from that, uh, you can sit uh, in, in the desks that are uh, more or less available here, uh, here in the coach, whatever you, whatever you want. Okay? And um, I think that's, that's all from my side. Um, I have just one question. Do you know what's Wikilove? It's not what you think, uh, or, <laughs> or maybe it is. I don't know. Uh, well, it's just a feature that I'll give. You, I, I, I won't even explain it because Chris will get into that. But uh, I will. But it's, it's, it's just a feature that editors, so registered editors, can just send wiki love to each other. So you're working on something, and then all of a sudden, the next morning, you find out that that paragraph that you were fighting with, uh, you wanted to reference to whatever, you know, someone came and did a great job. So you can just have your breakfast and, and, and do something else. So you go to that user page of the person that helped you, and you click on a little heart, and you send a bit of wiki love that you'll see how. OK? So that's the feature we are going to work on. I, I've made a lot of contributions to uh, Wikipedia, to the content, and I created a couple of technical articles as well. But I can't even figure out how to crack the door open as far as uh, programmatic uh, access to Wikipedia or contributing any kind of uh, programs to uh, the software. Yes. Um... Well, there's many ways, and, and if you don't know and you've been contributing a lot, it's our fault because you should know by now and we should have explained it properly. Uh, there's, there's a page uh, at mediawiki.org called How to Contribute, and that's a start. Okay, From there you can see how to contribute from uh, templates, bots, uh, extensions, many different areas. But it's a wide topic, and I think it's better that we can, we can talk about this later. Okay. Huh? Well, perhaps we can open a door for you here tonight. Yes, I'm just here. But I really think we should get into the topic. And that's a, that's a wide one. Uh, but for everybody here, uh, mediawiki.org, how to contribute 
uh, that, uh, that's a good start for all the other things that we can do apart from automated uh, browser testing. Okay, so uh, Chris, all yours. Uh, I will be in charge, trying to be in charge of the audiovisuals, and also will be paying attention to IRC just in case there's any questions, comments, anything. Okay? Thank you, Kim. Um, my name is Chris McMahon. I'm the QA lead here at the Wikimedia Foundation. I telecommute. Um, I used to live in Colorado, now I live in Southern California, and I'm not sure where I'm going to live next, but it probably won't be San Francisco. Um, this is a fairly new project. Um, we started a proof of concept about a little over a year ago, um, and it really got into gear back in the fall. Um, it's had some ups and downs, and we're doing pretty well. I'm pretty pleased with it. And um, so you, if you know the topic, we're going to talk about Cucumber, and we're going to talk about page objects. I see a lot of people here have laptop, laptops, and is there anybody in the audience that wants to walk out of here tonight with running executable browser tests? OK, I see, P, I see programmers. OK, good. This is, this is excellent. So my, I left some instructions on our meeting page about installing Ruby and uh, downloading the software from, from GitHub and, and that sort of thing. OK, awesome. Did everything work for you guys all right so far? Cool. So, so uh, for those of you who aren't, aren't doing that, I'm going to suggest a couple of things. One is that I want to get these people set up real quick. I want to look over their shoulders and see see what I can see. And if you like, want to like mosey offer and look at the river of their shoulders too, that would be pretty cool too. So let me just see what you have real real quick, just so I can understand. Oh, okay. Well, when you do. Um, there are instructions, and what we've tried to do is made this, make this pretty easy to, um, to uh, install and to get up running on your local machine. Uh, we have a shared test environment, which is the default target for, uh, for these tests. And um, I also left instructions. Let me uh, go ahead and bring up a wiki page here for us. Um, and another new project for us, not entirely new, but um, we, we, before I joined the foundation a little over a year ago, we didn't have a shared test environment that was really viable. We have a shared test environment right now. Um, we can't really see the URL here. Um, but it is called Beta Labs. And perhaps we could put it in the Etherpad. One moment. And even if you're not programming, I would love it if you would uh, just uh, log in to Beta Labs. And uh, let me make this larger if I can. Log in to, you can see the URL here, I hope en.wikipedia.beta.wmflabs.org. Sorry about for the, uh, the long URL there. And the reason I'm going to ask you to log in, and if you don't have a user ID to create a user ID, is because I'm going to need your help. Because I know it's really risky, and I know all the pros say don't do this, but we're going to actually write code right here on the screen, and we're going to run it, and it's all going to be executable by the end. And the reason that I want you to log into Beta Labs is that this only works if you're a user. You have, to be, you have to be a user to play with a lot of features on the Wikipedias. And in this case, we are in our beta labs environment. And, um, and you can't really go too wrong. You can't mess anything up. You can't hear anything. There's really, you know, this is, a, this is a sandbox for everybody. But it's a really robust sandbox. It's got a lot of extensions. It's got a lot of interactions. And the reason that I will ask you to do this is because what I'd like you to do is when you log in, I'd like you to visit uh, the Selenium user here if you can. Or you, if you like, um, you can visit me. Or you can visit some other user. You can visit your neighbor's user. Anywhere you want to visit. That's me if you, if you care to visit my user page on Beta Labs. I'm user C. McMahon over there. I can't show you this because I can't do this on my own page. Paper. But what I'm, going to, what I'm going to automate tonight is some tests for Wikilove. And this is Wikilove. 
And so if you logged into Beta Labs and you visit somebody else's user page like mine, you'll have a little heart button up here in your tabs on the upper right. And if you click the little heart button, you have Wikilove. And uh, Wikilove is a really remarkable, it's a remarkable feature in a lot of ways. Um, for one thing, um, it was a one-off project by one of our developers, Ryan Caldari, as I understand it. Um, it is one of the most popular features we've ever released as well. Um, every feature we release has a certain amount of controversy. And this one is almost all controversy-free. It's very nice. Um, it's a good uh, feature to use for browser tests. There's, uh, I have a list of qualities that make a feature good for browser testing. And one of them is that um, it's, uh, it uses a fair amount of JavaScript. And so there's a risk that it's going to look different in an Explorer, in a Safari, and in uh, Firefox and Chrome. It's going to, it, some of this JavaScript is not interpreted all the way. The other thing that makes a, uh, a uh, feature good for user interface testing, for browser testing, is that it requires you to navigate through the application to, uh, to exercise different states in the application that depend on previous states. Because th these, are, these are things that are very difficult to tell with like a unit test or an integration test or an API test. So in this case, we actually have to click Bind Stars. We actually have to click Food and Drink. We actually have to kit click Kittens and, you know, I, it's Kittens, you know? Yes. Uh, it's on the Etherpad, and let me bring that up. Um, you can see log in to. Okay, is that readable? I can make the soldier. So I have been doing browser test automation for a very, very, very long time. It's something I specialized in. I was uh, the very first open source browser test automation tool was called Water. And I was user number one for Water. And um, I was around when Solarium was released as well. So I've been doing this for a long time. And a lot of times people come to me. And, I, it comes, you know, and this happens to Adam, too. Uh, by the way, I'll introduce Adam Goucher. He's visiting from Toronto. He's a frequent Selenium contributor and well-known man about town. Um, anyway, really nice to see Adam. So uh, he's a far more expert than me at this kind of thing. But anyway, people come to me, and they come to Adam, and they say, Chris, man, we need to do some, some, some test automation. We need to have some browser tests. And my first question is always, well, what do you want to test? And how do you want to test it? And the answer is, you know, often we haven't thought very much about that. So that's what we need to do. You know, so what I like, the reason that I ask you to log into uh, to Wikipedia or log into Beta Labs is because I'd really sort of like you to spend a few minutes sort of understanding what does it mean to use Wikilove? What does it mean to navigate your way through this this application, how should this application behave? How do you think this application should behave? Hi, Judy. Nice to see you. Glad you made it back. Um, this is often a really difficult thing to say. What should the application do? How should this application behave? When I take action X, what is what happens after that? What should happen after that? Um, this turns out to be really the hardest problem in acceptance test automation and browser test automation and user interface automation is specifying at a very close level the proper behavior. People are nodding. People look like a, you open some eyes. You know, saying because because really truly deeply understanding a feature and how it affects a user is the most important thing that you need before you can even start automating a test for a thing. You have to sort of understand what it does. 
Hey, everybody sort of got an eye for uh, for uh, for Wiki Love now. You can send people some Wiki Love. Uh, in, if you visit someone's user page, let me get rid of this so you can see the page that I'm on. On the user Selenium user here, it's this little world heart up on the right. If you click the little world heart, you will have Wiki Love. Uh, okay. Yes. Um, this is what you mean? Sign up for testing on the, on the page on the wiki.org. So, so, yeah, so when you visit a user page and you click your little heart, you will have wiki love. And so, um, this actually brings us, brings me to my very first technical chunk of the presentation, which is that somebody's got to know what the software is supposed to do. And this is what Cucumber allows us to, uh, to specify. In a nutshell, this is Cucumber. These are the existing tests that I wrote. Yes, sir. For, uh, for, for Beta Labs, yes. Yeah, yeah, we know it. So if you click that, if you click a, is there any URL that shows you what to do? Or you just have to know who they are and everything. Yeah, you pretty much have to know who you want to who you want to say nice things about. You can check recent recent uh, changes or uh, whatever interaction you you might have with various users is why you might, people do nice things on Wiki all the time. You know, people uh, improve your articles, people send you a message, people do all sorts of things. Um, so. As I said, the hardest part is actually, and particularly, specifying in a very close way what the software is supposed to do. And this is what Cucumber gives us. So I've, I've written a very simple, simple test for WikiLove. And um, in a really risky move, I'm going to ask you guys to help me write the next step. And we're going to walk through what that means to do that. Um, so if you're looking at the feature itself, Cucumber gives us the ability to specify a background. Um, this is the things that happen before each and every test that we run. So in this case, I'm going to be logged in. I'm going to visit the user page of Selenium User 2. I'm going to click Wiki. Every single test that I'm going to run is going to do these steps. It's because they're all sure. Why, why, why write them more than once when you don't need to? So when I click Barn Stars, I'm going to see the Barn Stars select box. And you should see a message text field. Barn Stars is the simplest option. When I click Food and Drink, I see this Food and Drink select box. The field's going to contain some baklava for you. Uh, the field give people stroke waffles. There's an there's a old, old joke around here about stroke waffles. We have a lot of Dutch, uh, and we love their stroke waffles. And in this case, the food and drink option should have a message text field available too. And of course, when there's kittens, because kittens, you click kittens, you should be able to select an image. You should see a hello text field containing this text about a kitten, and you should see a message text field. So uh, it's a high level test. It's a very, very simple test. And you may notice uh, I have not yet actually saved a wiki of 
uh, gift you know, on our page. I simply, I simply decided that for this test, all I want to do is that I want to check that the, the aspects of this feature are in place, and I can manipulate them, and I can, I can address them properly. I haven't saved. Um, I'm not, I haven't decided if I want to yet. So let's run the test. Um, for those of you who might have this up and running and ready to go, um, we are using a feature of Ruby. This is uh, the Ruby language. But as, as I was telling um, Adam, uh, we're operating at such. I had somebody tell me, "Oh, I, I don't want to run Ruby." I can't run programming. I'm not programming. I like to sort of emphasize that Ruby lends itself to a very high level of abstraction. And what we're operating here is at such a high level of abstraction is that the, the aspects of Ruby, the programming language itself, are almost invisible. As you saw with our plain English before. So we're using Bundle, which just simply makes sure that, that our environment is correct without us having to you know, think about it too hard. Uh, Cucumber is our framework that allows us to tie all of these bits of abstraction together into a test. And it's, I'm actually about to run the wrong test because I was doing some work on this one earlier. So let me run the proper test. I was actually doing something else in this environment now. So we're going to use a profile for Firefox. And hopefully the demo gods are going to smile at me. And we'll see Firefox come up. And as I said in the background, we're going to log in. Visit the user page. Bring up what you love. This is our bounce star text. Remember, I just checked that this exists. I don't try to tap into it or anything. Not yet. I probably will later. I just wanted to have just a just a really simple framework that's very understandable so that I could show you and you can help out. Any questions while we are fascinated by watching the test run so far? Yes, sir. Were the instance variable logging? Uh, that is actually a marker. Um, that's a little out of scope for my talk this evening. Uh, we mark tests that require logging with that. You may see the instance variable also will have various environment names, um, like uh, Beta Labs, the one we are here, uh, Test 2 Wiki, um, Production, we do some production monitoring with this. So, as you can see, uh, but, but yeah, it's a little out of scope, but you can talk to me afterwards, I can tell you more about that. I have three scenarios, three past, 20 steps, and we past. So, I'd like to go back to my cucumber file, and I'm going to ask you what, do you, what do you think the next test should be? I mean, you, 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 are, you guys are experts at WikiLab now, right? You, you know everything there is to know about WikiLab. What do you think we should do next? We could do that. 
I was thinking actually we might try, if you look at the, uh, the options uh, on the WikiLeaf page, I'm, I'm going to just like, we, we might do that at the end. I, I'm just I'm a little trepidatious about actually doing. Uh, one thing about a shared environments is that things tend to be permanent there. Um, no harm in doing that. We have some very large number of really silly images. Um, because we upload a lot of images for testing, but um, I'm not sure we're going to upload a whole ton of barn stars right now. Um, what I was thinking is maybe you know there's there's a if you look at the wiki feature itself, there's four choices you can make, and I don't really have tests for three of them. Yes, there's one question from IRC. I yeah. mean, if it's possible to run the tests slower to be able to follow what's happening. I know you not well. We, we sort of want to run these tests as quickly yes. as possible. Yes. There, in, in the back of my mind, as I recall, there is an option to run tests slowly. I do not know what it is. I'm sorry, I'm afraid I run it again there for you. Um, but anyway, if you're looking at the cucumber file, what I think that we should do. So I think we should get some basic coverage for that fourth option. You know, because it looks a little suspicious, right? Because those first two options, they all have you just you know, clicking and making a selection. The fourth option is really different than that. The fourth option has a whole different way of working. You actually have to fill things in and be creative and inventive and, and, and this sort of thing, right? Do you, you see what I mean? Uh, how those first two options, they sort of like lead you through the... Uh, through the, the garden path there, but you get the option here to make your own. Which, um, since we have our, our, our first three tests, we're actually doing a little bit there. We're doing okay here. But I, I got that fourth option kind of worries me. So I can stop this test. It's going to pass again, right? So what I think we should do is, is in this scenario, Okay. Sure. More. More separate. Yes. Thank. You. Okay. I used to be a musician. I'm just used to eating microphones. Um, what I'd like to point out: we're talking about cucumber. We're talking about page objects too. And one of the things that cucumber gives us, and one of the reasons that we chose cucumber in the first place, is that. Do I lose my screen, Ken? That's too bad. One moment. One of the reasons that we chose Cucumber, as I was saying, <laughs> desktop. Well, you are seeing Cucumber. Can I'm going to reload this, see if I can come in back in. Okay. That's better. One of the reasons that we chose Cucumber is that it affords us a very low barrier to entry. So you saw fraud, I think it is. Uh, yes? 
Frank, excuse me, I didn't read your, your name. You had said that you know quite a lot about Wikipedia, that you've, uh, you've been working with Wikipedia for a long time, and that you're exactly the kind of person we're looking for, someone who knows how the software works, who knows how the software is supposed to work, who can actually give us a file of cucumber scenarios that say, given I do this, when I take some action, then some things should occur. This is actually an incredibly useful thing for us. So, Kim, I see your screen, but no one doesn't seem to be sharing. Selenium, that's a really good question, actually. Selenium is a tool that drives a browser. Um, Cucumber is a framework. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, there you go. Now we're back. Selenium. Okay, so I'm going to take a technical digression here. Um, there are two versions of Selenium. There's a Selenium version 1.0, which is which is older. Oh, and Selenium 1.0 worked by opening the browser inside of a frame and injecting JavaScript into that frame to manipulate the DOM itself. And browsers would then jump around thanks to JavaScript being injected in a frame. Today, everyone, there, there's Selenium 2.0. Selenium 2.0 has an engine inside of it called WebDriver. WebDriver is like this, it's not approved yet, right? It's like WebDriver is this close to being approved as a Worldwide Web Consortium standard or W3C standard as the standard interface for automating browser behavior. And um, this, of course, requires the browser vendors to agree to this standard. And to this date, uh, the, the WebDriver uh, protocol is fully supported in Firefox, Chrome, Internet Explorer, Opera. I think that's all. Safari, thank you. Um, the, the, the browser API is called WebDriver. The, Outward-facing implementation of that API is called Selenium. The Selenium API, again, to my knowledge, is fully supported today in Ruby, Python, C Sharp, and Java. And Facebook only just recently, like like a week ago, right? That Selenium Conf released a, a, a PHP interface for it. Go ahead. So not, not to hijack uh, entirely, um, hijack somewhat, um, the face, there are about seven or eight different full PHP implementations of WebDriver. Facebook released one about two years ago and then ignored it for two years and released a new version that's completely backwards incompatible with the previous one two weeks ago. But the new one looks pretty nice, but I haven't played with it yet. So yeah, there, it, it's a uh, web driver is a standard. And Ruby, okay, one more technical detail, and then I'll move back to Cucumber. Ruby uh, web driver is really very nice for a number of reasons. Is the Yari Bakken who maintains it uh, builds the the uh, Selenium Ruby uh, interface automatically, constantly, and he does it off of standards. The um, the 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 web driver is built automatically off of the W3C standard. And the outward facing API is built automatically off of the HTML5 standard. So as these standards um, mature and evolve, the Ruby uh, client interface is, uh, matches them automatically as they progress. So this is a very, very nice feature of, that Ruby gives us. Cucumber is a way. All Cucumber does is it gives you this. Well, it gives you some other things. Well, Cucumber gives you the ability, say, to specify in a form of given, when, and then what should happen in the software. Behind these given, when statements, you could have objects. You could have API calls. You could have meeting minutes. It doesn't really matter. Given, I turn the handle on a door, and I push. When I stick my head in, everyone in the room says, should say hello. I mean, you can, you can use a cucumber standard to do, to implement anything you want. We happen to be putting 
Selenium browser testing on the back end of this. So let me show you a thing. I have a new test up here, right? You might click make your own. So I'm going to do a little thing in Cucumber. We remember how to test run, right? So um, I'm not going to run the whole thing. I'm just going to run the very last scenario. Cucumber gives you the ability to specify a line number. This is really kind of convenient. So I'm going to run my test from line 20. So I'm going to run the, the third feature, and then I'm going to run my new feature. And you notice I've written no code so far, right? No code whatsoever. And let's see. And I, did I not share my screen properly? Come now, people. There we go. This is better. OK, so I wrote, did that do incorrectly? We'll do that one more time. I hope the donor won't smile at me. Like I think they might not. <laughs> it runs a little slow, a little more slowly here than I'm used to. But one of the, the lovely things about cucumbers, and uh, one of the, thing, the lovely things about Selenium, and one of the reasons that it's so popular, is because you can watch the browser. I mean, I find myself just hypnotized by watching the browser just just move all by itself. So we're going to click kittens. And if I've saved the correct file, which I have not, one moment. Sure. Ah, okay. Sorry about that. Here we go. This is what after what I was after. So you notice, without actually writing any code at all, Cucumber has actually given me my next line of code that for me to write, for me to use. And as I said, we do this by simply writing a line given when or then that uh, that um, is going to be our next test test step. And when we run it, we will then get a line of cucumber executable code. It's pending now, so it doesn't actually do anything. But what we actually what, what we can do with this is that we can add it to our steps file. And we can add it anywhere we like. And we can 
as you can see, we express the reg regular expression above with the code that you wish you had. So let's do that. And so you can, from the examples, you can probably see what we should do next. We should say on. And we're going to want to tell the page that we want to be on, which is the wiki love page. Um, we're going to say, and, and here's, at this point, we start moving into the page object part of, of our world. Page objects are an abstraction of a page. Page objects are um, what we want to do. We, we identify an element of a page with uh, some aspect of that element, like an ID value, or a name value, or a class value, or the text that's contained within that element. We have a number of ways to identify uh, the uh, the page element that we want. And then once we have those identifiers in place, we can name that element anything that we want. I'm going to refer you actually to the, uh, to the documentation for, um, for the page object uh, Ruby gem. It's on GitHub. It's maintained by a guy named Jeff Morgan, who is known to everyone as Cheesy. Um, and the documentation here is really absolutely top notch. Um, I, I recommend if you're going to dive into um, doing the browser test automation in our framework that we have here, uh, I have this page open constantly. This is my, my reference for everything. And one of the beautiful things that it does is it talks about how you can identify elements. Like you can identify a button, for instance, with alt, with a class value, with ID, index, name, source, text, value, xpath. Um, and then while it's not true in the raw Selenium IDE, using the water API, which is even a higher level API, we can specify multiple identifiers. We can specify the third instance of class X on a page. We can specify very, very closely exactly what element that we want to, uh, that we want to do. But in the meantime, all we got to do is we got to decide you know, what we're going to call that thing where you click make your own, because we got to click make your own, right? So what are we going to call it? We'll just call it make your own. That's what we call it. And you can see from some of the other examples that we have, and if you were to read the documentation for page object, you see that what we're really going to need is to make your own element, and then you know, if you were really excited and you really were hip to reading this documentation, you would know that we would have to tell the, the page to click our thing. It's getting a little more complicated here, right? It's not plain English anymore. We have to actually think about what we're going to name our thing. We're going to have to think about what page it's on. And we're going to have to think about what it is we're going to do to this thing. And in this case, we're going to click it. Yeah, and again, I'd like to sort of emphasize that um, one of, the, one of the, the reasons that we chose the framework that we did and the implementation that we did is that the barrier to entry is quite low. If you are not a programmer and you, say, and you were to submit a Cucumber file that's simply statements of given, when, then for your favorite feature, that's awesome. If you want to give us a step file that's full of things that don't run, that's great too, because look, I can run this. As, as Cucumber has told me my next step that I need. So I don't have to think too hard. I just have to put something in place, and then I have to run my step. And as usual, since we have a background step, we're going to bring Firefox up. It's going to log in. And once it finishes logging in, we're going to na navigate to the user page and click Wikilove. We're going to click Make Your Own, right? And oh no, we have a terrible, terrible, terrible red error, right? But 
that's okay because we just made up that name. We just made up the name make your own, right? So we get a we get a, an error message. It's a very important error message. It says undefined method, make your own element for an object called wiki love page. And remember in our in our steps file we said that we were going to be on the wiki love page and we're going to have a thing it's called make your own element and and we get an element, we get an error message saying right up front what we have to do next. Anybody, what we have to do next? Yeah. <laughs> we have to put make your own onto the wiki love page. So, to, in order to do that, uh, I'm just about to get there. The question, um, the question was how to get the DOM. Yes. Uh, I'm, I'm getting complaints from IRC that they don't hear the questions. I'm, I will be repeating. Okay. The question was how do you get the DOM for this? How do you how do you I, how do you identify this element? And um, as I said, we're not there yet. Uh, this is our next step because right now, as I said, we've got, we, we have told those developers, we've told me, you've told Jelko exactly what needs to be done. We need to click, make your own. And we've given you a step. We've even, we even call, we've given a name to that element. We've told you guys to click it. So now we need to actually make the, put the element in place. So, um, in order to do this, we can do this several ways. Um, probably the nicest way is, uh, uh, I take it back, this is the nicest way. If you right click in almost any modern browser, you'll have a, a thing called inspect element. And there are a couple of different DOM inspectors. There's Firebug. I don't know, anybody you know what, what else there is? Um, there, Chrome Developer Tools. It's F12 in Internet Explorer, right? Um, okay, yeah, it's, uh, anyway, there's tons of ways to do this. There's a DOM inspector. You can right click on an element. And what we can see is that this particular element, in this particular case, it's down here, it's a div has a certain class, has a certain text. Um, and uh, I'm actually, I'm really pretty fond. In fact, um, if you guys remind me, I, I should really buy Ryan Caldari a beer. Because as I was, um, as I was automating this, this application, I found it's really very cleanly written. It's very, really very well designed. This element doesn't have, a, doesn't have an ID, which you might want, but it's, it's quite, nice, to, it's quite a straightforward way to identify it. And we'll identify this one the way that we identified all the other ones, which are very similar. We'll say, and this is, and right now we are talking about pure page objects. This is page object syntax. We want to make a div. We're going to say that what we want to do is we have a div. And now, our next argument is our totally made up name for this element that every time we use this name, we're going to use the same name for it, uh, which we call make your own, right? That is what we called it, right? Make your own, yes. Make your own. And we know that this div has text, and that text is make your own. So we save the file and we run our brand new scenario. I hope. Except uh, I have to edit properly, right? It doesn't work if you put the colon in the wrong place. That, li that live coding thing, right? We were just talking, uh, Adam and I, the, the guy that, that maintains the uh, Selenium WebDriver bindings in Ruby is does this all the time. He is scary typist. He is the most accurate typist I've ever seen in my entire life. He can code for an hour in front of 500 people and he makes no mistakes. It's, it's, it's eerie.
And there it is. You saw it turned orange. We clicked, make your own. Our, our step worked. Our step actually worked. How about that? Any, any questions at this point? Is, is it fairly clear what we've done so far? We have plain English. We run plain English. We get the outline for our next step. We, we make up some stuff for our next step. We run that. We get our error. We put our element in our page. Bingo, we have a working test. Is there any, is there any part of that that's not straightforward or anything I can clear up? Any question, really? Now it's been one hour, so it's, it's a good test also to see if if you are following, uh, so if you have any questions, uh, now it's a good moment. Anybody actually writing tests along along the way? Thank you. That's I was really hoping people would. What's that? Oh yeah, yeah. We haven't checked any of this in yet. We can we can do that. Oh, go ahead. Tell them what. Actually, take the mic. Take the mic and say. Tell people what you can do. Oh, I haven't been writing new tests. I've just been following along with the ones that okay, you're doing. that's fine. But you've been <laughs> typing them out, right? You've, yeah. You've been yeah. typing them out. And you've been running them as they go. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. This is you are you are like you are prepared to be part of my team right now. You <laughs> you are totally prepared to be part of my team. We have a mail list. Kim can set you up. Just just let us know. Actually, now that I'm standing from this position, I can tell that I don't see many tweeters, etc. So people are really working here. <laughs> <laughs> so we can do something a little fancier. If we go back to our, uh, I managed to close it. Uh, let's go back to our, we call it a feature file. These steps in our um, in our cucumber things. Uh, we can take a look and see in the barn star, right? I should. I have a message text field, you know, I, and I and, and the food and drink and kittens, you know, they have some default values, right? And this test is going to check that the default value is some baklava for you. The default value is a kitten for you. I'd like to point out one sort of nice aspect of cucumber as well, because everything inside your step is a regular expression. Um, we can check for header text field containing anything we want to. What, what this line does is we can call this step, I check for a header text field, with any strings that we want. We, every time there's a, a, a similar element that has a, a string, we can just grab that string from the cucumber file. So if you decide tomorrow that, um, that excuse me, that, uh, this should say some strobe waffle for you. Well, yeah, I mean, we can just do this right now. We can just, you know, it, it doesn't, but we can change this to strobe waffle if we can change it to anything else we want. Um, so, uh, and, and our step files are, are going to be fine. We don't have to re reuse those. There was a question. Hello. Hi, Both Dave. Maggie and I are getting way more um, deprecation warnings than you. And uh, I'm on Ruby 2, and Maggie's on 193. Um, there is a line. Are you using RVM? Yes. OK, there is a line on the meetings page on MediaWiki.org uh, where I point out at the bottom. Yeah, uh, try. If you, are you aware of the meetings page there? It's the, a yeah. slash meeting slash 2013 Uh huh. So they're at the bottom of the page under run and test. Yeah, um, that's what I'm testing. Yeah, there's a, you see the, the, you might have to do the source. You might have to source in your .rvm file. Okay. Yeah, that's what I'm testing. <laughs> Try that and see if that gets rid of your deprecation warnings. There's another question. Hi, S. Haven't seen you in a while. Oh, wait. Uh, it looks like you might be seeing the wait until present uh, depreciation warning, which I think is has to do with some of the login stuff. Oh, yeah, it could be. I don't um, think it's something to worry about. It seems to be working OK. We do have a few deprecation warnings. Um, that could be one of them, depending on the version of the gem you have to be running or the version of Ruby that you happen to be running. Um, 
we try it. We we try to keep things pretty up to date. Um, so uh, so actually, we keep things really up to date. Um, I had a question. Um, I was wondering about um, you said about ma matching messages. Um, when uh, do you have any support for internationalized internationalized messages? So presumably some of these things are actually coming from message files and depend on what the current language is. Yes, actually, we have Jelka and I complain about this to each other mostly. Um, that uh, in what we would really like to see is um, uh, a lot of ID values, a lot more ID values for page elements than we do see. We end up having to, like for instance, um, on the Make Your Own, uh, we have a class that is not unique on that page, and we have the text, and that is our only identifier for that element. So we have no ID that we can work with. ID values, in case you didn't know, where W3C standard is there's only one unique ID value per page. Um, name is not constrained that way, but name is also almost always one unique name per ID per page, or per element per page. Um, it is a concern. Actually, it a, it's a great concern because um, as we do, as you may know, we do internationalize our, our Wikipedia. It's in how many languages now? 100 and 300 and there's hundreds of languages. Um, our language team is incredibly devoted and incredibly competent, and we, we do internationalize these messages. And it is, it is a, uh, a concern, let me put it like that. Um, and we would like to see more uh, robust identification of elements in quite a few of the Wikipedia um, uh, uh, web pages that we see. We do have some tricks, though. I mean, there, there's, there's always another way to skin a cat. This is just a super simple, simple, simple demo. But yeah, very good question, and, and it's, a, it's a really big concern. Any other questions? OK, well, I think we might try to run another, I think we might try to make another step. We'll be bold, as they say. So I'm thinking that if we click Make Your Own, what do we do next? Given I click Wikilove, when I click Make Your Own, and what should I do next? I'm thinking I need to type, right? Yeah? I don't have anything I can select, right? I, I just need to type some because that's what, the, that's what this aspect of our feature is all about. And we have to remember a good browser test is something where you have to navigate a path. So in this case, we have to click a thing. Then we have to enter some text. Then we have to enter some more text. So I think we need a, uh, a feature that when I click make your own, then I should be able to type into, what is this called? Header. Your own header? What do we want to call it? Anybody? How about your own header? Is that all right? So one of the reasons we want to be, we want to take these lines, these lines in Cucumber, we want to make them as descriptive as they can possibly be. Because when this thing fails and some manager is, is reading this test failure, this manager does not have time to dig into the steps files, to dig into the page files. This manager wants to see what step failed. So we need to really be, we need to take some care. We need to take some real care with how we describe what it is we do here. So then I should be able to type into your own header. I think that's pretty descriptive. Is this, if this goes down, we're going to know why. And as before, I'm going to run, I, I can run out of line number. I'm going to run my very last uh, scenario.
And uh, what happens next? Anybody remember when I run a run a feature file that has a that has a, a line that's not been implemented? Remember what what we're going to see? We click it, and then sure enough, I get some beautiful yellow text in my particular shell that gives me my very next step. It tells me just exactly what I need to do next. It says I need to write myself a step. Uh, one moment. And we can put these steps anywhere. We're, we, we do this a lot. We have a convention. We keep our uh, given when thens in alphabetical order. We keep the elements in our pages in alphabetical order because as these get larger, um, it makes less sense to have them in the order that they are executed because you just want to find them again. So we keep them in alphabetical order. It does not matter the order that these happen to be in. So if you remember, we're just going to follow the conventions on the existing test. So we're going to say on. Wikilove page, and we, what do we want to call this? You know, we're going to call it a thing. We're going to call it your own header. And just to be really safe, let's go. Let's go check the documentation. We're going to look up uh, what old cheesy says about text fields. And how we uh, how we manipulate them. So text field. So so Jeff tells us that um, if we type just the name of the element, we're going to get what's in it, and we don't care about that because it's blank, right? And but if we type the element equals, we can set that value. That's what we want to do, right? We want to be able to set the value because it's empty now. It doesn't do us any good unless we type in there. So we're going to type in there. We're going to use this right here, and because Jeff tells us that, Jeff's a good guy. He gives us lots of methods for our, for our objects in our pages. So we're going to say your own header equals, I think it's a string. I should use single quotes, not double quotes. And so remember, as always, if you get really, what we like to do this. We like to, uh, if, if you ever pair program with Joko, my, my colleague in, uh, in the QA department who uh, is the author of much of this architecture, this framework, is a really expert guy at these particular set of tools. And, and if you and ever pair is, program with him? Let me just, and also who is in Croatia uh, now on IRC, so it must be, I don't know, 3, 4 a.m. Yeah, it's about 5 a.m. in Croatia now, right? 5.30, something like that. So, so he's following and active, answering questions hey, in Joko. IRC. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, as, we, as we know, oh, click make your own. So I made a mistake. I think I have two of these. Yeah, this is wrong. That's not what I should do. I did the wrong thing. Let's just get rid of all this. Actually, let me just do this. Because I've lost my mind. Hello, steps. And what I called this was 
I should be able to type into your own header. Sorry, I had a typo. The demo gods have been pretty good to me so far. And the error messages are really nice. The error messages always tell you exactly what went wrong. But as I was saying, if you have a pair program with Jocko, he's going to make you, he's going to force you to make your test fail first before you make it pass. It's an excellent practice, and, uh, and I am often too lazy to do it. Joko is quite a code reviewer. He's quite a taskmaster. He doesn't let very much get by him. This is awesome. This is exactly the error, the, the error that I wanted to see. As always, it's telling me that my Wikilove page object does not have a method for your own header. So let's make that happen. In our page file, if you recall, we will say, and we have to find out what this is because it's a text field, right? So we're pretty sure. It is a text field. Oh, and it has ID. This is lovely. See, we always love to see an ID value because we always know we're going to hit the right element when that happens. So it's a text field. And our own special name for it is my own header, as I recall. Is that my own header? Oh, your own header. Excuse me. That wouldn't have worked. Your own header. And in this case, we have an ID, and the value for that ID is MW Wikilove header, which is a very lovely thing. I, as I said, IDs are awesome. If you're a Wikipedia developer, give us IDs. And if I've not made any outrageous typos, you should see my string actually uh, populate. Make sure this is correct here. Lovely. Automated test type that right in there. Everything's passed. This is a beautiful thing. Uh, I'm going to stop here for any questions real fast. Anybody have a question real quick before I go? I'm getting a capture image when I run my test. I didn't get that earlier when I ran it from outside this location. You're suspicious now. It's a it's a timing thing. Oh, that's why. That's why I just told them to put a capture. Please. Yeah, there. Uh, you know, one. The, and this is a really this is a really great example too. I, I'd like to point out browser tests are inherently fragile. You are inherently going to get what they call flaky tests. Um, any tests and, and actually I, I'll tell you having to log in at all is kind of a smell. Um, we don't really like to log in with the test because it's kind of a waste of a lot of time and steps. But since we're running these in our shared test environments we that are publicly available on the internet, we have to have a login step. Um, and this is absolutely something that happens to me. When I run my suite and my tests do some failed logins and it doesn't work, I have a lot, bunch of bogus failures because... Um, because uh, it's craft and cunning mostly. Um, good design actually eliminates a lot of this, these sorts of bogus, flaky failures. What's that? Good design of what? 
Therein lies an entirely separate presentation, I'm afraid, my friend. <laughs> I was able to run the tests from a coffee shop three blocks away, but I can't run them in here. That's pretty interesting. I don't really have an explanation off the top of my head, except that it looks like some, whatever, whoever you're logging on is uh, failed too many logins. That's my suggestion off the top of my head. I'm going to do, uh, if there are no immediate questions, I'm going to do one last special thing. And it's kind of at a, I'd like to, uh, actually, I'd like to thank you all very, very sincerely for helping me write some real tests right here. And, and I'm going to check this in right now, if you'll, if you'll be, bear with me. So um, we use Git and make sure my files are good. Yeah, my files are all look really good. So I'm going to get just to prove that this is real. That this we're doing real work here, and and you guys are helping. Yes, ma'am. Do you have a, a mic? Um, would you mind just opening each of the um, files in your text editor? To sort yeah, of make sure one moment. I'll to, do this because we're a little behind. Um, oops. Let's do this. Good. Oh, whoops. So I think I know we have this, uh, this. Yeah, well, let's do that. I'll, I'll do that later. This is more important. So uh, opening these files, we have our feature file. We call this a feature file. Um, the one, the important things about a feature file is that it has at least one string called feature and a name, and at least one string called scenario and a name. This is this is pure cucumber right here. Okay. Any questions about a feature file? Okay, a steps file. Remember when we run our Cucumber feature file with a with code we haven't implemented, we get that that outline, that pending step. This goes into our steps file. On our steps file, this is where the page object starts coming in. We're going to uh, that wiki love page. Uh, the pages that we're using to test are objects in Ruby. They have a name. They include a page object that follows by our own special name for the page element we want to manipulate plus whatever we want to do to that element. That's our step. That's the action that we're going to take here in our steps file. And then finally on our uh, page file, this is where we specify what the page is. You can see it is the Wikilove page. It includes a, a page object. It has a particular URL. We can use this, reuse this one URL in multiple test environments, including a local environment, including anywhere else. And then each element is specified according to the documentation that uh, Jeff wrote for us here uh, in, in the page object um, thing. So as I was saying, we have a very special page, my favorite page in all of Wikipedia. It's the TLDR page. So. Okay, excellent. So get. He's ready. I want to. Yeah, I got uh, some problems. This one is all right. Excellent. Test steps written writ at WF with volunteers. Get review. So I am going. We uh, we have a code review tool here at the foundation. It's called Garrett. Um, code review is a really really important aspect of quality um, in at, at the foundation. All code undergoes code review. Uh, it is considered extremely bad form. To, uh, to check in your own code without review. Let me just go somewhere where I'm logged in so I don't have to fool with this. As you can see, uh, our, our tests uh, are, are here. These are the changes that, we, that you and I made. Eh, I have a couple of, Jelko is gonna minus one me because I have some blank white space in here that he doesn't like, but that's okay. And I'm gonna let Jelko 
I'm going to let Jocko review this. And then I'm going to, I'm going to leave a comment that says, uh, these tests are pretty good. I'll clean up the extra white space later. As soon as this gets merged, our tests are going to be running at least twice a day in the test two or in the uh, in the uh, beta labs test environment. That's all I have for you. I want to thank you very much uh, for your help and for your attention, and it's been lovely working with you. Yes. So, so now it's logging me in, okay? Which is bizarre. Now, I suspect that might have been what happened, like on Facebook, um, if I log. Lynn in Berkeley, and I come to San Francisco downtown. It says that um, I'm in a strange location, and it won't let me log in. So I suspected maybe that's what your site does. If you're at a different IP address, could be, could be. A it's know. weird, but it's it's logging in now. So awesome. Any other questions? Non-deterministic. Uh, any other questions? Uh, demos. Uh... Wait, wait. First, I would like to say thank you, Chris, for all this tour from from zero to hundred. So please. <laughs> my pleasure. Very much, my pleasure. And I think I think there's some people here that ask questions. So I think we can we still have like 20 minutes, a bit more. So I think it would be very good if uh, yes, we have questions, but maybe we can break a bit this setup and just go a bit more casual. Uh, there's also many other people here that they can ask questions, answer questions. So what do you think? Yeah, let's uh, you know, by all means, just uh, sounds like we've covered it. Sounds like people are pretty straight and. Find me or uh, uh, ask Jelko on IRC or talk yeah. to Adam or your name, ma'am, in the, the yellow sweater. Yeah. Maggie, Maggie knows what she's doing. Thank you all very much. I appreciate yeah. it. So now we will do this. Someone on IRC online, uh, we will cut the connection and then we will still stay here. There's some drinks. Oh, there's a question. What can we do to get involved? Contribute. Well, yeah, that's a question from. So, uh, please see MediaWiki.org. Um, take a look at MediaWiki.org. Uh, do a search for QA. Yep. Also, the uh, QA mailing list. Um, there should be. Uh, it, is the mailing list on the on the uh, meeting page yet? I, I will, believe so. Yeah. If well, it's not. while you all go into questions answer, <laughs> I'll just update the wiki page. I'll <laughs> put a link to the QA mailing list, which is exactly discussing topics like the one today. Um, you can subscribe there. there. Is, yeah. Um, and this is the best gateway to get involved in anything QA wiki, at Wikimedia. List.wikimedia.org. You can sign up for the QA mailing list I'll if, post you, it uh, if you'd like. All right. So let's do that. I will. I will still follow up with the IRC. I will update pages. And here now, you, for instance, you had questions, so you can, you can just. That's a really good question. Actually. Can you repeat the question too? The gentleman asked, um, "Are we planning to do test-driven development?" Um, and the answer is. I certainly hope so. We have not done that yet. Um, and um, one, there are really two ways that we can go about doing using tests like this, using Cucumber in particular and tests like them. It's called acceptance test-driven development, ATDD. And as you know, I keep coming back to this. The most important contribution we can have are people that truly, deeply understand what the software is supposed to do, how the software is supposed to behave, and how to describe that behavior. So in, in the scenario that you're talking about, we write the Cucumber tests before we ever write a feature. We say that before we even code a line, here are the conditions that our feature must satisfy. In my experience and anecdotal evidence from uh, in my entire career in the last decade plus, a tiny, tiny, tiny fraction of people who do browser tests actually work in this way. Almost everyone uses browser tests as regression tests. And they're incredibly effective at, at regression tests. So this is what we do at the foundation almost, well, so far 100% of the time is we are taking existing features and we are building coverage for existing features. 
We are moving hand in hand, step by step, with some of the features under development. We are we have constantly morphing browser tests for our visual editor, for example. Um, we are have a, an intern from the GNOME Foundation Outreach Program for Women who is learning just as you are learning, um, and her target is the visual editor, a much much more complex uh, and tricky application than Wikilove. I cringe to try to show you how to automate visual editors. It's a very complex product. Um, and Rachel is spending a significant amount of her time learning how to do this. Um, I would love to do acceptance test de development instead of only regression testing. It's not been a high, super high priority for us as yet, but I would love to see more of it in the future. Great question. Yes, sir. How come so many of the Wikipedia pages don't pass W3C validation? I have not been here long enough to give a, a experienced answer to that. My, my theory is that it's a historical accident. Um, Wikipedia itself is only a decade old. The Wikimedia Foundation is uh, when did the foundation start, Rob? 2000? Well, 10 years ago, yeah. Ten, yeah, OK. We just had so, our 10th anniversary. But, but the foundation, at first, was like three people. And it was five people yeah, the following yeah. year. And it's like, it's, 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 it has not been a high, well, well go ahead. Yeah, so um, on, on the W3C uh, standards front, so what, um, uh, like, we do I, I think have reasonably good HTML5 support. Like, so if you're if you're looking for um, uh, the compliance with HTML, the HTML5 spec, it's it, it, like there are probably are bugs in there. But you know, are there particular like validation errors that you're uh, that that you're particularly concerned about that were um, that that many pages have? Yeah, practically every page I try, especially if I'm editing a page and I stick that uh, into the W3C, I get uh, validation errors. In fact, there's a Wikipedia page listing the things that are that always occur. Yeah, go for it. Yeah. <laughs> um, this topic has come up on the Wikitech L list a number of times. Um, I'm not sure if anyone specifically here can answer this question very well, but if you search the Wikitech L archives, you can probably, ah, we have someone here that can answer this well. Uh, hi. Uh, I'm partly responsible for that, I guess. <laughs> um, I did not introduce it, but I did vouch to keep it. Uh, and that sounds a little weird, like why would you keep an error? Um, so um, this is somewhat controversial, but uh, the way I'm partially summarizing other people's points, so this is not entirely me. But um, basically, the W3 validator, as I'm assuming you're, assuming you're referring to the validator specifically, is a useful tool to catch issues. It is, however, not a lint tool in the traditional sense for programming because it's not actually what browsers use. It is what browsers should be, ideally, but they aren't. Um, and as such is, it has a lot of things that might be different, but browsers don't actually do. And as such, the, sometimes the most viable solution to fix a bug is to do something that browsers support in some cases, but the validator might not, not uh, uh, validate. That is true, and that's actually one of the reasons that we run our tests in a variety of browsers. As of today, we run these in Firefox, Chrome, IE10, IE9, IE8, IE7, IE6. And yes, we do actually identify significant behavior differences in different browsers with exactly the same page elements. Uh, I think the most uh, significant example is in our lists, we have a UL. Uh, we're like, and in some of the menus, we have like an empty list. And the W3 says we shouldn't have an, an, an empty list. And this was actually fixed by switching to HTML5 because browsers have always allowed it and they implemented it in the spec. And so it's more often than not, it's the spec being outdated and behind what browsers have already done than the browsers being behind and the spec being forward. It's usually the browsers being forward. Uh, and if you would check to validate the same page again in a year from now, it might validate exactly in the same state. Yeah. Any other questions? Gotten a little far afield. 
question. Um, I already closed one time the, <laughs> the session. <laughs> I think I think really I think uh, we can uh, just uh, leave the mics apart, stop the the streaming, and just stay around having more conversations and just questions based on I have this in my laptop, etc. Is that the thing? Yes. So I assume yes. Uh, thank you. <laughs>